What's up guys, it's Jamie. In this video, I'm gonna talk through the iPhone device payment plan through Verizon Wireless. I recently upgraded to the iPhone 12 Pro from my iPhone 11 Pro. I'm already on the payment plan and I couldn't really find a whole lot of information or details discussing how this process works. So what I wanna to do today is just bring you through both the pros and the cons of the device payment plan so then you can figure out if it's the right route for you. Before we get started, when you're watching this video, if you could, just hit the like button. In order for this video to reach other people that might be looking for the same information, it needs to have some interaction, I guess, for the algorithm. Also, like I said, I am new to YouTube, but I do have a bunch of new videos lined up. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything new to come. So to start, what we're going to do is just first talk about the payment plan. And this is specifically for Verizon Wireless because that's what I have and it's for the iPhone. However, I'm assuming whether you do it through Apple or another carrier or another device, it's pretty similar. So basically the way that the payment plan works is that when you're going to purchase a new phone, at the time of purchase, all that you need to pay are the taxes for the device, then the overall cost of the device. So in this instance, I purchased the silver iPhone 12 Pro, 128 gigabytes. So that cost of the device is spread out over a 24 month time period. The monthly cost that's spread out over 24 months is going to be added onto your monthly bill. There is no interest rate on this. So essentially you're subsidizing the cost of the phone over 24 months at 0% interest. So one thing that I wanna address when I was doing my own research on payment plan and what should be my route for when I upgrade to my new phone, I saw a bunch of videos that would talk about stop buying your phone, stop buying your iPhones on a payment plan. As far as I'm concerned, if I can buy something, even if whether I buy it outright or spread the payments off for 24 months, if it's at zero interest, why would I not do that? Especially considering if you're trying to upgrade relatively often, Theoretically, you could hold on to a new iPhone and have it for multiple years, but if you are someone that's upgrading relatively frequently, the payment plan might be a good route for you to take. When you think about it, we use our phones more than anything else. So when people say, why are you, um, why are you spending so much money on, on a phone? I guarantee you, you use this thing more than you use anything else in your life. So I think it's warranted, especially if you use it for business, or other items, it's warranted to spend that kind of money on advice to make sure that you have the latest and greatest technology. So now that we have that out of the way, you know, the concept of the payment plan versus paying or buying the device upfront, it's pretty straightforward. It gets a little confusing when you start thinking about and you look into the upgrade options. So if you go and you, you buy an iPhone, we'll say right now you buy the iPhone 12 Pro, you have the payment plan, for 24 months. So in two years, you have the phone fully paid off. You want to then upgrade to whatever phone they have then. You could trade in your device directly to Verizon. You could trade it to another carrier if you wanted to switch. You could sell it on your own. You own that device and you can kind of do with it how you please. The difference is what if you don't go and pay off the device and you want to upgrade sooner than 24 months? So you have an option to upgrade once you've paid off 50% of the device. So in this case, the device is $1,000 essentially. Once you get to $500 or traditionally a year after purchase, you are eligible to upgrade. So that's the situation that I was in this year. Let me tell you a little story about where I kind of got a little confused and um, I think I screwed over when I was upgrading from an iPhone 10 to the iPhone 11 Pro last year. I had been on the payment plan for my iPhone 10. I wanted to upgrade. I think there was like one payment left. I talked to Verizon when I went to go and pre-order and get the new 11 Pro. I was getting a device credit for trading it in. Upon trading it in and going through the entire process, I found that I never really got any credit. And essentially what had happened is in order to take advantage of a device trading credit, no matter how much you've paid off, until you've paid off exactly 100%, you cannot take advantage of that credit. So because I literally had one payment left, I was out of that credit. What I was not informed to do was to 
pay off the device. So it was $41.66, then trade in the device, and then I would have gotten the $300 or $350. So now I'm gonna talk about my experience when I was upgrading from the 11 Pro to my now 12 Pro. I went with the base model 12 Pro, so it's the same cost that you paid for the 11 Pro at $999. And I had paid off $500 because I'd had the phone for a year. So I paid off $500 and 50% of the device at the time that the new phone was released. So I had a few different options for upgrading. Option one was paying off the device myself. So the remaining $500 and determining how I want to get rid of that device, whether it's traded in to Verizon, you could could have gone to potentially another carrier. You could sell it privately. Those are those options. The reason why I decided to not do that was the value that Verizon was going to give me was $400 for the phone. So essentially what I was going to do was pay $500 to get $400 back, which didn't make sense. I could have potentially tried a little bit to pay it off and then see what I can get trying to sell it privately. I just didn't want to have to deal with that. So I just thought it would be the easiest route to go ahead and trade in the phone at 50% value. The one issue or one potential issue that I could see with the route that I took is if your phone is not in good shape. So if the screen's cracked or there's some sort of issue with the phone and the value of what they're giving you is less than that $500. So what I think is that if you are going to do the payment plan, the best way to take full advantage of it is to upgrade your phone every single year. If you were to hold it for two years, the only advantage is you're not paying taxes twice in a year because you aren't buying two phones. Or every, you're not buying a phone every single year, you're buying one phone every two years. So that's my experience with the iPhone payment plan. For my situation, I think it works out perfectly. This may not be the right route for you, and that's perfectly fine. I just want to give my experience so if there's other people that are going through the same situation. But what it really does, it allows me to no hassle very easily upgrade my phone every single year if I want to so I can have the latest technology and the latest device. If you are looking to purchase the new iPhone 12 Pro, I did do like an initial unboxing and first impressions. If you are interested in checking that video out, I'll put the link in the description below. If you guys have any follow-up questions, if there's anything that I didn't address, just leave a comment below and I'll answer them. If you're able to get something out of this video, make sure to hit the like button. Also, I've got a bunch of new videos that are gonna be coming out, so subscribe to the channel. You don't wanna miss out. I'll catch you in the next one.